John, congratulations for your documentary, A Choice of Weapons, inspired by Gordon Parks. Thank you, Gag. Thank you very much. I'm really excited about it. Hey, not a problem. Not a problem. You know, especially the fact that it's being uh, showcased with on, on HBO. That's it. That's even more remarkable. Yeah, that's great. That's a great. I've done uh, four, four or five films for HBO. And uh, I think that's right. Or four. And they are gr a great place to be, for, especially for uh, documentary stuff. It's a great team, super supportive, uh, great resources. So I'm pretty psyched about it. Absolutely. <laughs> terrific, terrific. And, and now we have Devin here, which is also awesome. Well, um, John, let, let, let's ask that initial question. Uh, yeah. What sparked you to do this documentary? I, I've been uh, aware of Gordon's photography for a very long time as, as a young person, as a kid. My, my father is an artist and a sculptor and painter. And as a kid, he had these compendium of Life magazine photography. Uh, in the studio, and I used to just leaf through them, and I became familiar with Gordon's work, um, even back then. I mean, I didn't know anything about Gordon, but just the imagery and the life imagery. And then as I got older, you know, in college, reading his biographies and learning more about his journey, um, you know, you, I, every piece I do, especially the kind of biography, I, I find a little piece of myself in the character, and I totally connected to Gordon's hustle and his ability to, you know, kind of pull himself up by his bootstraps and just, you know, tell his story through, through the camera. You know, he had something to say and it's, it's so much like uh, the gentleman who just joined us, Devin Allen, you know, discovered that camera and then found their voice in a way. And I think I found that with documentary filmmaking when I, when I, when I found my way into it. So Gordon has always kind of been there from a, from a point of a, of a child and until today. And, and then the, the Gordon Parks Foundation, reached out to me uh, and asked if I'd be interested in making a film about him, and I, and I jumped at the chance. Absolutely. Well, Devin, um, just hopping on here uh, for yourself, this is a, this is a great opportunity to um, showcase some of your work and not to mention um, some of your knowledge about uh, Gordon Parks. Did Gordon Parks always inspire you or you were always into photography yourself? You're muted. <laughs> actually i didn't start photography until later in life um i didn't really know much about it you know the closest thing to a photographer i knew was my grandmother taking pictures you know at the family cookout and things like that i didn't really get into photography until i was around 24 25 years old you know so i found it pretty pretty late and i came by way of poetry me and my friend um hosted a poetry night together and i found myself taking pictures at the poetry night and i liked the way humans interacted once that lens got onto them. And when I set out to do to start this journey, it was 2012. And I just remember Googling famous black photographers and Gordon was the only person that popped up. And then I just went down this rabbit hole of just looking at his work and reading about his life and reading quotes and, you know, watching his inter some interviews I found on YouTube. And I said, I want to be this guy one day. I want to be like this guy. And, you know, um, in 2013, you know, I hassled my grandmother and she helped me get my very first camera. And then I've just been, you know, doing photography ever since. Well, your 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 photo your photos, Devin, were uh, very powerful itself. Um, you know, from those uh, Baltimore Baltimore uh, protests. So when you got a call from um, John about this documentary, uh, you know, about Gordon Parks, what was your initial reaction? And John, why? How how did uh, Devin came on your radar um yeah the way i found out it from peter you know i like you know this whole journey you know i feel like golden has just been guiding me like or has his hand on my shoulder like i said i got first camera in 2013 and in 2017 i became the first golden Parks fellow you know so when i found out about the film peter told me about it and he told me who was directing it and um and i just was like uh let me get at least like five minutes screen time on it please you know, and it just been, it was amazing that they selected me because I know Gordon has touched so many people, you know, and has shaped, you know, if it's not just photography, but the entire art community. So to be able to be, show my work and just talk about my appreciation to, you know, what, how he changed my life, it just was a, a blessing. And yeah. John, how, yeah. Did, how did he came on your radar? Well, the, the Peter that, that Devin mentioned is Peter Coonhart, who's the, the, um, uh, director of the Gordon Parks Foundation. Um, and he, I went to the gala the year that Devin won, 
the uh, won the uh, scholarship or the fellowship, as such as it were, the Gordon Parks Fellowship. And so I, I was instantly. They did a, a celebration. They showed some of his work, and I was like transfixed. I said, I got. I want to meet this guy. I want to work with this guy. And so when Peter came to me to talk about doing the Gordon Parks fun, uh, film, there had been another Parks biography done by HBO actually in the early early nineties that Gordon was very much a part of. So they they had the kind of traditional biography already. Um, and I thought, well, let's drag him into the present day. I mean, what motivated me most, and I wanted this to be a celebration of, of Gordon's imagery, but the imagery of artists working today in the mold of Gordon Parks. And there was nobody more in the mold of Gordon Parks than Devin Allen. Like I said, it's not just, it's not just the work, it's not the vision, it's not the storytelling that, Gordon, that, that Devin's doing with his camera, it's his personal story. It's, you know, he says it even in the film, you know, he was hustling, he was on the streets, he, he lost some of his friends. Uh, and then he discovered that camera and everything turned around for him. He, he, he had a vehicle, he had a weapon in which to, to ameliorate some of the problems that he saw in his community. And he's done it, his commitment to Baltimore is unbelievable. And so when I went down to shoot him, I just wanted to keep shooting. I wanted to do more with him. You know, I shot him and his grandmother. Uh, I originally had that in the film, Devin, you should know that, but I ended up having to cut it for time, you know, but, um, but, you know, he just, you just, you can't help but be around him and see Gordon's vision uh, through, through Devin's lens. I mean, it's just, it's, it's incredible, really. You know, there are so many uh, photographs that's presented in this documentary. And um, obviously there are probably more Gordon Parks photographs that uh, we, we did not see. What was the first most impactful Gordon Parks photograph that uh, affected you, that embedded into your image for both of you? For me, it was the, the Fontanelli story that Gordon did in the late 60s when he was doing a story on poverty in the inner city. And he embedded, you know, in his technique of, of you know, the, the sort of intimate technique he uses to get involved with people and families. Uh, this was a very impoverished family living in a tenement in Brooklyn. And there's a famous photograph that he took of the mother, uh, the matriarch at the poverty board. Uh, her name was Bessie. And her children are draped over her shoulders, and, and, the, and the perspective is unbelievable. It's from behind the agent, the agent who she was dealing with. And you can just see the look on her face. Her whole family is hanging from her. She has this look of despair on her face that speaks to all of the just sort of, you know, the cruelty of poverty in a way that, that no story could, nothing. It was just in this one image that he was able to capture. Um, that really moved me. It was one of the earliest photos I saw from Gordon and recognized its, its effect on me was stunning. Um, so that would be mine. Devin? Um, yeah, for me, you know, I came across, the first images I came across were, of course, the iconic, you know, Malcolm X, uh, you know, the Muhammad Ali photos, like that amazing portrait when, you know, all the water is just dripping down, you know, Muhammad Ali's face. But we're really dreaming to Gordon was how he can maneuver so many different spaces. And one of the stories that really touched me, how he followed gang members um, and how he was able to catch those intimate moments where I find myself in Baltimore, where I'm around drug dealers, I'm around hustlers, I'm around gang members and people, you know, in those spaces, but I don't view them as thugs or gangsters. They're just human beings. They're my friends. That's my peers. And that's what rang true to how Gordon was able to capture them. He brought the humility back, you know, where a lot of people get demonized. You know, he made, he, he showed that they were still human. You know, and that's what kind of inspired me to actually document my everyday life. So a lot of my imagery is just me and my community. You know, a friend might call me, come to the boxing gym, or we sit outside on the corner, come down here, and I'm coming, I'm bringing my camera. You know, and that's probably, you know, what kind of set the tone for me and my work about just documenting the streets of Baltimore. Absolutely. I know I have a little bit more time with, with just you um, for one more question, Devin. I, I have more time with John, but... Uh, but I just, I just want to address uh, one, one more question directly to you, Devin, before, before we let you go. Um, one of the things that's a beauty is um, for Gordon Parks is his black and white photos. Obviously, he has done color photos, he has done film, and he, done, he has done um, black and white photos. All of your photos are black and white. Talk about um, capturing the moments why in black and white and how that is meaningful and impactful to you more than anything else. 
Yeah, I always, uh, you know, I always tell people that I'm slightly colorblind, so I struggle with colors anyway, you know, so I lean towards, you know, black and white. But what I love about black and white, I find with the human brain and just even just for myself, when I look at imagery or film, I'm digesting colors as I, you know, you know, um, look at these images as they pass. But I find when I drain it of that color and it's just that starch black and white, it allows me to control the narrative and it drives you straight to the emotion that I want you to see. So it allows me to remove all distraction. I just find that colors can be kind of distraction from what I'm trying to relate in the image with though black and white allows me to give you that gut wrenching punch that I want you to feel gets you straight to the point. No cut cards, it's straightforward. And you just dive into that, 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 that emotion that I want you to see. Absolutely. And that Time Magazine cover was absolutely powerful because of, because of that, especially Thank in you. black and white. Well, Devin, hey, thank you very much uh, for, for speaking with us. And um, hopefully we'll catch you next time. And, and I'll carry the conversation with John. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Have a good one. See you so, so, John, as, as I was going to um, piggyback on that question, like I said, uh, Gordon Parks has done all types of imagery, color, black and white, and film. But you addressed all three of them into your documentary here. Why? Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's funny because I found found that he utilized color when he needed to kind of editorialize in a way. And I think a great example of that is when he went to uh, Alabama in the in the in the mid fifties. You know, he, here he is a, a black man with a camera going to Jim Crow South. You know, eleven months after Emmett Till was viciously murdered. And he chose color film, you know, in, in time also when almost all the searing Life magazine essays were done in black and white. And he chose color because without the color, you can't see the light in, in, it, in a way. And it brought it to life. As Devin says in the film, there are portraits that he does in that series that are of like an ice cream stand, right? And it's a beautiful, it's almost like a Rockwell painting, right? And, 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 and sort of rendered in color. And then if you look closer, you see color and whites only, and you, you start to pick up on those things. And, and it was absolutely intentional on his part. And so without the color in that moment, I think the, I think the photos would have been less powerful. For example, also the photo of the woman outside the, um, the movie theater with the coloreds only, that sign in neon, it, 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 the sign is so robust they, that, that the town in Alabama that put that sign up, I mean, that was institutional racism. I mean, the amount of effort put into the, colors only sign that lights up and shines and dazzles wouldn't have come through I think as as powerfully in black and white the red the reds the way they pop um, so I think I think when he uses it intentionally it's it's fabulous you know I always think to my eye and it's interesting what what, what um, Devin said was I often think that black and white is an abstraction you know a uh, powerful one to his point you can get an emotion um, but the realness of color sometimes is what you need to convey. Uh, you know, as Gordon says, and as we say in the film, a, a photo is a, a both document and symbol, right? And so you want to tell a story, but it needs to symbolize something greater. And I, I think he chose color smartly. And so I wanted to do the same. Well, absolutely. And um, now you, you present a lot of old footage, especially with uh, Gordon Parks. Uh, was it difficult to, to utilize those uh, old footage or were they pretty easy to gather um, for your documentary? The, the footage of Gordon himself speaking? Yes. or yeah, well, that all, was a little, all the stuff. Yeah, yeah, that was a bit of a treasure trove. Yeah, I mean that we are great researchers, and and with the help of we work closely with the Gordon Parks Foundation to unearth some of that material. Um, the, there's a great piece of archival that's color it was shot on 16 millimeter film, I believe, by by the Black Side Company, um, and it was an interview that was never used. But it's the whole story of Gordon's relationship with Malcolm X, which was like such a gift to have him there. Where he, you know, I found that Gordon, the older recordings of Gordon are hard to understand a little bit. Um, his his voice got a little garbled in the toward the end of his life, and he did a lot of interviewing at his house during that time. But this one was probably when he was in his seventies, and and it's very clear, shot on film, and he basically narrates his whole relationship with, with Malcolm X. So, so that was just unbelievable. So it was kind of a hit and miss. That was a major hit. So I was very excited to get that. But like with any film. You know, you send researchers out to 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 unearth, you know, looking under every stone to find those little gems, and we we had a we had a few of them in this film. 
what what would you th what would you think of uh, if Gordon Parks was still alive and taking photographs today? I mean, it seems like what things haven't really changed for 50, 60, 70 or 80 years. No, you know, it's funny is that the, the thing that changed sad, what well, sadly, you're right. The things that Gordon was trying to trying to raise attention and raise, raise awareness to social injustice. So much of it is still with us today. And that is that's that's the tragedy of 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 what's going on. But the other part of that is that everyone has has the weapon in their hands. Everyone has one of these, right? And I think he would be enamored of this technology. And I think he tried to figure out a way to harness it and make it his own. But that's one of the things I want to get at in the film. And I hope people take, take it away. I mean, very early on in the film, the, the opening montage is uh, intercut with modern footage of, of Black Lives Matter protests. And um, because I do think that's important to remember that, that we all have this power now. We all have this weapon of a, of a camera in our hands. And it has been effective in, in changing policies and raising uh, incredible awareness. Um, and so, so yeah, I think he'd embrace it. I think it'd be pretty cool to see him, what he can do with an iPhone. I mean, they're amazing. It's amazing technology. Well, basically, uh, you, you answered my, la my last question. I, what I wanted to know was uh, what, what do you hope that the audiences would actually pick up? But it seems like the message is that we all have that weapon now that, uh, that Gordon Parks actually Absolutely. And use it for good. I was, you know, I thought it was amazing that the young woman who took the photo of uh, the footage of George Floyd, um, that horrible, very hard to watch footage, but she, she won a Pulitzer for it. And rightly so. She was there and, um, and captured a moment and changed, I think, you know, hopefully worked toward change. It certainly raised a, an incredible level of awareness, but we all have that power now. And, and maybe, you know, maybe a few less selfies and a more turning the camera in the other direction and seeing the world around us. You know, I, I do liken what Gordon was doing at Life Magazine. Life Magazine was the internet back then. It was Instagram. 20 million some odd people in this country looked to Life Magazine to understand our country and the world around us. And, um, you know, so we have that power today. And so I think we should, you know, turn it for good. Most excellent. Well, hey, thank you uh, for carrying this conversation with us about your documentary. And, um, and it's great to know that uh, there's going to be thousands and tens of thousands of more Gordon Parks in the future. Let's hope so. Absolutely, man. Cool. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Take care.